The Windows Communication Foundation is part of the .NET 3 framework and the slideshow will look especially at the, some of the new features of the WCF. So the, the main application of the WCF is towards service oriented applications where an application can be uh, reduced to a call to services. These two services can be distributed over a network. So for example we might have a spell checker service, a grammar checker, we might have a printer service and, and so on. The advantage of this is that we can actually distribute consumers and servers across a network and even servers themselves services servers with services themselves can become consumers of other services this makes the design of applications much simpler in that we can have well tried and tested services so the windows communication foundation is built around the traditional web services which was extensively developed within ASP .NET 2 within the .NET 2 framework. .NET remoting was part of uh, the, the whole .NET infrastructure. It also integrates message queues and distributed transactions into a single entity and it should make the communication between uh, a client and the its services much simpler. Basically, service-oriented applications, uh, as implemented by .NET 3, typically involves a web client or some form of client and some service or typically a web service. And the service itself advertises to clients as to the data and the interface that it actually has. Messages are actually sent to it and then responses are returned back. So basically we have an ABC of the address of the service, the binding of it, and then a definition of the contract. The bindings themselves can happen over TCP, where TCP is a faster protocol than HTTP. HTTP has the advantage of being able to get over more firewalls. The contract itself is what is exposed to the, the web client or the client. So the, the advantage and the, the actual uh, implementation of WCF is that the boundaries between the services and the clients are explicit. The services are typically autonomous on the on the distributed system. Services also share their schemas and contracts but not their classes. And also that there is service compatibility based on uh, a policy between the, the two systems. So the main concepts that we have are relate to channels, bindings, contracts, behaviours addresses and endpoints. So we might have a client and the client communicates with the service directly through a message. What typically happens in, in .NET is that there is an intermediate form as to some sort of proxy in between and this is handled by WFC. So the user never actually needs to know about the, the proxy in between, but it is the proxy that handles the messages between the client and the service. It can also happen that a service actually becomes a client of another service. So we can get this chained architecture. The key thing is that we create a binding between the client and the service, and then we use a channel to be able to channel the data between them. Once the channel is set up, 
It is then fairly simple to pass messages between the client and the service. WFC uses a five-layered architecture. At the top layer we have the applications, and that's where the applications are actually located. Then the layer below we have a contract, and it's up to this contract to define the data and the messages which go between the two uh, entities. This will define the bindings and the basic policy for the binding. This then builds on the runtime environment for the uh, for w WFCF. And then below this we have messaging where we ha support the basic messages between the two uh, entities. So it might be uh, HTTP within SOAP or TCP within SOAP. SOAP provides us with an excellent method to keep the messages compatible between different systems. And then at the lowest layer we have hosting either through IIS which will automatically start and stop our services or through an executable where we have to manually start and stop them. So let's look at a simple example between a client and a service. So in this case the service will provide the capital city of a certain country. So the message that we'll send is in this case the country and it should return back what the capital city actually is. So the advantage with this is that we can have a service which is providing capital cities that we possibly don't have to maintain but our application can actually use it. What we actually create is a communication channel between the client and the service. In this case we're defining that it's TCP communications on the local host and on port 8080. So on the client itself we create our server thread. Then what we do is that we call up the remote class which is on the uh, the other machine, in this case it's on the local host. Then we start it up and then after that we bind the service and create our communication channel. So this defines the port that we're using and the address of the service. On the other side we advertise the service that we have through uh, an interface and in this case we expose the get capital method so in, in, the, in the, the client we can call up this method for this channel. And again we create the service by defining that it's on port 8080 on the local host. So the code that we actually use is this. This will create the DLL for the service. So we have our, our interface here, which will expose that interface to the, our application. Then we have the, the, the method, which will be called, such as this one here. We send in the country, and then we return back the capital city, back to our application. So we can see here, this is where we start the the server. The wait one allows us to wait for uh, an event to stop the server, and this is provides us with the with the binding here. We create a channel, and then we just use the channel by calling up the method. So this shows an example. We create our our DLL here for our service library. Once we create that we then add it into our application and then that should expose that to our Windows interface. So let's look at a practical example of creating a, a contract. So to start with our new project would be a WCF project using a service library. This will create a DLL. So if we open one that's already been created, 
So this here defines the advertised interface for the service. So this would define all the methods which will be exposed to our clients. And then we can actually implement the method which will be advertised. In this case, get capital. We send in the country and then we get the capital city back. That will go back to the client. Then we can actually define what our services and that we have an endpoint of port 8080 with a local host using TCP. And then we can actually start our server up and listen for communications. When we receive a stop uh, method, when the stop method is called up, then we can actually stop our, our server. So the key thing now is to rebuild that and we get a note of our DLL because we must add that as a reference for our Windows pro for our console application. So we start a console application and that would be done in the normal way. We would obviously add our reference that we've created to our service. Added. So now that should allow us to create the service. This will start up our thread for our service here. Chute.server is our class name and then this starts the server up. Hopefully we've managed to expose the classes in it as we can see we wait a short time so we'll wait approximately uh, one second and then we can actually set up our side of the channel and create the channel from now on so S will be our channel now that has been set up between port 8080 and the service after that, we can then just communicate with the channel through the methods that it advertises. So in this case, we want get capital. And that should return back what the capital city actually is. So we'll try and rebuild that. That's what. And we run it. And we'll put in a country and it should run return back the correct capital and if we don't put a correct capital in then we get that if we press return then it should shut down our service and that's showing a simple example of Windows Communication Foundation